Hey everybody, it's Reva with Quality Sewing and Vacuum and today we're going to talk about making clothes for our friend Barbie. Ah, so this is lots of fun and um, if you've made Barbie clothes, you know, put it in the chat or if you have specific questions, I'll try to answer them. Um, but we're going to go through a whole bunch of different things. I want to talk about cutting things out and also we're going to use a scanning cut for that. I want to show you how that works. And then also um, we're going to uh, do, um, I'm going to show you how to, a couple of, there's a hemming technique I wanted to show you. And then also I want to show you something about trims. So um, first thing I probably should do is put in my USB stick because I forgot to do that because I've already got the pattern completely scanned on the scanning cut. Um, but so I want to have it there just to show you when we get to that point. And if I can put it into, there we go, into the thing. This is the pattern we're working with today. It's just a real simple little um, Barbie pattern. And a Barbie is 11 and a half inch doll. So if you see doll pattern, clothes patterns for 11 and a half inch doll, that would work for Barbie. Um, and then there's a couple of different Barbies. They say that there's the curvy Barbie and then the modern Barbie. I don't know the difference. I have old Barbie. What can I say? Um, she's not my very first one, but you could tell she's mine because, I mean, seriously, look at the hair. She's been in a box for all this time. So we're going to be talking about styling the clothes, not their hairstyles. So anyhow, so this is the little dress that um, is from this pattern, and it was really fun to make. Now, have you ever made Barbie clothes? I don't know if you have or not, um, but I remember when I was probably – in junior high or something like that, I thought, oh, I know how to sew. I can make Barbie clothes. You know, they were so hard, but they're really not. But what I didn't know then was the steps to take to make it easier. So we'll probably go over this a little bit in, in, in again in a minute. But first of all, you want to have patience when you're working with something this small. So your sewing skills are great. If you can sew a straight line this long, you're perfectly fine and you can do Barbie. The, the challenge is you just want to take your time, okay? So let's talk about fabric for a minute. Barbie clothes do not take a lot of fabric. I mean, seriously, um, this is the skirt pattern right here. Let me find it. Here's the skirt pattern and you put it on the fold. So our skirt is actually only this much fabric. So that's not a lot. So this and the little bodice doesn't take much fabric at all. So here's my bodice front and here's my bodice backs right here. Very, very little fabric. Um, but what was fun about cutting this one out, just, just to throw, throw this at you, is I had this as a scrap of fabric. I didn't have much more than that. And then I thought that was so pretty with it. And this is from a charm pack. So if you have a charm pack of fabric, usually in a charm pack, you get two of the same print in there. So you have your two, two of the same print. I use two of the five and a half inch squares to make my bodice front. So that's pretty, that's pretty fun. Um, but we are going to need to cut the, um, I need to cut out the, the linings. Okay, for this. And cutting a lining really makes life easy. So let me show you how you go about um, uh, scanning your fabric and then we will cut out the lining so you can see how that's done. So I'm going to take my pattern and this is the scanning mat for the scanning cut. See, and I'm just going to position it in here. Actually, let me take a blouse. I'm going to take that's to cut him out when I'll show you on here. What I did is you cut this on fold. So you actually need a left and a right side. And I did that on the machine. Oh, I can, I'll show you how that works. It's really cool. But then you're just going to want to have the 12 inch mat to cut it out. And I've already got it cut out. So I guess I really don't need to do that. Okay. So let's go ahead, wake the, wake him up. Baby, you have a lot of comments. A lot of people have like crocheted Barbie clothes or made Barbie wow. clothes or even made Barbie clothes. And decorated Barbie around. The oh, cake. I always wanted a Barbie cake and I never got one, but I did get to go to a birthday party once with a Barbie cake. It was so much. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I did not mean to thump you all. Uh, that was so much fun. Oh, I am. I admire the people who can crochet the clothes and, and do that. Oh, as an aside, I have a fashion show for you at the end. 
So stay, stick around as long as you can because I have my Barbie clothes that my great aunt made me and I have some of those to show you. Okay, so I have my scanning mat and what makes a scanning mat so cool is it kind of is like a, a photocopier. You know how you used to put, you lift the door, you put your copy in there and then you close the lid and then you could scan. You remember going to the library and doing that? And then you could scan and make photocopies. So this is a forever reusable mat. So you just slip the things underneath it. So that's what I did here and I'm gonna tell it to scan and I want to scan to data, which means it can save it. And then that's what's going to um, work really well is that we can then have it in here and we can manipulate it and change it. So what I found that works really, really well is to actually cut out the pattern piece. So this is one pattern piece, but the pattern piece is actually this piece right here, this, this thin band. So scanning this whole thing, it was difficult to get it to see just that outer edge. So I found that if I cut out the pattern piece itself, the machine had an easy, easy time of finding that pattern piece. So I'm going to go ahead and say I want to find the outer edge. And it's having a hard time today. It might be my lighting here. Ah, I'm going to, I'm going to do it again. How about that? Let's try a, a different piece. And I think I had it up too high. Anyhow, we'll just try the little top, the little, our little bodice. Let's see if we can get that to, to scan better for us. Scan data, start and start. You listen to your scan and cut too when it tells you things. Okay. So again, I found it really easy though. If I cut out the whole piece all at one time so that way it wasn't confused I tried starting to do it and I um, with all the extra around it and I found that it had a hard time with that and I just mounted this on freezer paper because I knew I'd be taking it in and out of the scanner uh, quite a few times so there's all my pieces and let's go here and choose oh see it found it really well I don't know if you let's get down here and see if you can can see it but there it found the entire bodice see how it's got the black line around it it created that line so then we can say preview if we want to and then there it is and say okay and then we can tell it we want to save and i'll just save it right to the machine now the beauty of saving it to your machine is that you have it whenever you might want to make this pattern again so instead of cutting everything out every single time ta-da it's saved right into the machine i love that not much i like less than cutting stuff out i really really don't like to do that okay so then now let's go and let's cut some things out i'm going to retrieve data and if i go to my um go right here into the scan and cut this is where we saved it here's our little top and it's ready to be cut out there so what i want to do is take my fabric mat it has the beige bottom now if you don't have a scan and cut dx model maybe you have an older one then there were the fabric high tech fabric carrier sheets and those you want to use because the fabric will stick to it really, really well. In fact, if you have an older machine, you can use this fabric mat as well. Um, you can't use the old mats on the new machine, but you can use the new mats on the old machine. Okay, so this is stuck down and it's not going to go anywhere at all. So I'm going to go ahead and load this guy into the machine. And then I want to see where my fabric is, but I'm going to cheat a minute and I'm going to go ahead and start over because that's just the bodice and I don't want just the bodice on my USB stick. I have the whole dress and that's what I want to bring in is everything on the dress. Now, um, I'm going to come in here and say, okay, and I want to delete, I'm going to edit. I want to delete that piece because I don't want to cut that. And I do believe, yes, okay, delete, delete. I just want to do the um, the top, the bodice is all I want to do right now. So now I'm going to come in here and I want to say okay, and I'm going to go to my tools. Because see how there's this gray piece right here? That's telling me that someone had it on, 
I think the um, on the large mat, nope, it's on 12, good. We're good to go. Okay, so now I just want to make sure it wasn't on a 24 inch mat. Now I want to scan the background. So I'm going to hit scan and it's going to take an image of what is on my mat. Now, you know of brother for the sewing machines, but also for the copiers. So the quality of the scanning that this does is amazing. And that's why it was able to turn our, our little uh, bodice piece into an actual um, item that we could cut because it created the cut lines for us. So I'm going to choose this and I want to move it. Can you see the peach? That peach is the fabric that we're working with. So I'm going to move this over here and this over here because I want it to match up with my fabric. I don't care about that I put my fabric where my pieces are because you can move the pieces to where your fabric is. And this is really fun too if you have a print or anything that you want to um, you want it to cut in a specific spot, you can see the print and then put it right where you want it to be. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do that I'm gonna change out is I'm going to use the beige uh, blade. The beige blade matches the beige on here, fabric, fabric. So I'm gonna take this guy out and I'm gonna put him in and it's so easy to change the, the tool. You just open it up and cut it. So now I'm gonna say, okay, and say select. I wanna say cut. And then I'm going to do a test cut. Test cut is important because you want to make sure that you're going to cut through your, your fabric properly. And I'm going to move it all the way over here. And notice that it still has the background image on. So I know that I'm actually putting it on fabric. Okay, so now what makes this machine really cool and different than the original scanning cuts is that it senses how thick the fabric is. So it's gonna test the mat. Right now it's testing the depth of where it finds the mat. Then it goes into the fabric and it tests the fabric and then it knows how thick that fabric is so it can cut your fabric for you. It will cut up to two millimeters, or I'm sorry, three millimeters in thickness. And look, it pulled right out. So, and this is not treated. This is just fabric right off the bolt. I haven't starched it or anything. So now we just say start and it's going to go ahead and retest that mat. It does it every single time, but the beauty is then it's not going to cut through your mat. It's just going to cut your, your items. So this is going to take care of all that for us. And we're going to have some wonderful pieces that we're going to be able to work with. Now, I don't know if, um, you guys have made any Barbie clothes lately, but the patterns are kind of fun. They're getting a little bit more modern. Um, I had to get that one because there was a wedding dress in it and then pants. And I just love the little, um, what is it, the mermaid style here. So there are lots of different styles there. This one was the first one that I bought. And of course, it's because it's traditional Barbie as far as I'm concerned. And then there's just, there's lots of fun ones. And there was just a sale on the pattern, so I had to get them all, right? Okay. So now I'm going to say OK, and I'm going to eject the mat from the cutter. And this, oh, got to get my little guy out. Bailey said that um, years ago, um, when her son was in kindergarten age, he invited a classmate to a birthday party, and she made Barbie doll clothes as a gift. And then after that, he got lots of birthday invites because all those girls wanted to some <laughs> Barbie clothes. You know, way to work the, the, the system there. That's awesome and i bet he loved going to all those girl parties because he was probably the most popular boy in school that's fabulous okay so here is um how easy that that cut out and look at how fast it is so and they're perfectly cut so you don't have to worry about fiddling with anything it's ready to go okay i am just going to put the carrier sheet back on just so i don't get i don't want to lose my tackiness of of that okay so that's how easy the scan and cut is. And remember, you just put it into the memory of the machine or heaven's sakes, get yourself a pink memory stick and write Barbie on it and then put all the Barbie clothes on the Barbie memory stick. And wouldn't that be cute? That would be really fun. Okay. All right. So let's talk about um, things that you can do. Oh, this is my little, here's my little uh, crinoline for the petticoat, petticoat. So that's in there too, and that's that's in this one too. But I wanna show you a couple things. Um, the first thing I want to sh talk to you about, let's talk about finishing an edge for the, um, 
I guess I need to thread this little guy. Um, I want to show you about tell you talk to you about finishing the edge for um, for your pieces. And I don't know why I don't, can't get that threaded, but I'm going to just do it with my scissors and just do that instead of asking it again. I probably had it pulled too tight or something like that. But anyway, okay. So Barbie, you sit over here for a second. I'll bring you back. Okay, so now there's a couple of ways to finish off your uh, your edges. So you can do, and I'm going to bring over a scrap of, of fabric to show you this. So once you sew your seam, well, actually, let me, I'm going to sew one. How about that? I'm going to just sew the side seam here really quick. Okay, now, when you're sewing Barbie clothes, you want your stitch length to be smaller because these are tiny little things. So I'm going to take this down to um, a 0.2 uh, stitch length instead of a 0.5 or 2.5, I should say. So I, I like to sew at a 2, and then I'm using my quarter inch foot. Now, the um, seam allowances on these clothes is a quarter inch. So if you can take a look... Let me put this underneath here and I'm going to use my scissors as a pointer. This is a quarter inch right here on this particular foot. Okay. The inside of his toe, see the inside of the toe right there? That's an eighth of an inch from the needle. An eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch. This red line is right where the stitch is going to sew. And this red line is a quarter inch from the needle that way. And this line is a quarter inch behind. Okay. So since we're doing quarter inch seams, this makes it so easy to work with. And I'm going to use my needle down uh, function and I'm going to turn my speed down a little bit because I'm sewing without a foot control today. So you can go ahead. Oh, and this machine said, hey, you don't have the dual feed on and we want the dual feed on. The dual feed is actually a feed dogs for the top. So it makes life really lovely. Okay, turn you off. There we go. So now we're just going to sew right along that. Okay. So now we have our quarter inch seam with our tiny little seam allowance. Now what you can do is you can trim that if you want, but if you don't want little hairs as they get played with, see how it's frays a little bit? We can use pinking shears. So I'm going to cut off my thread because that bugs me, right? And then I'm going to come in here and see, notice, can you see where the seam line is? And I'm coming close to the seam line, but not cutting the seam line. And this will also help notch that, that fabric. So that way, when I turn it right side out, the fabric goes this way. And then it will give it so it can, when it's pressed, it can make a nice curve. So that's how you get a nice curve is either by clipping into the seams or you could just use pinking shears and just get them really tight. Okay. So that's, that's the start of it. So that's one thing to do with your seam. The next thing I want to show you is I want to show you doing a hem. This is a curved hem and it can be crazy to cut or to sew because you've got to, there's, this is a longer, let's put it this way. This edge right here is longer than this place is right here, right? So to fold it up, you're going to have more fabric trying to get into where it needs to go. Does that make sense? Okay. The seam allowance on this little skirt is a half inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to make this a little bit longer of a stitch and I'm going to sew one quarter of an inch away from the raw edge here. Actually make it a little bit smaller. Okay. So I put my foot down. Now, when you're going around corners, you don't want to fight it too much, but if you anchor your finger, it will kind of sew for you and, and it will kind of keep that space or the, the, it'll go in a curve. Whoops. It'll go in a curve pretty naturally. I'm a foot control sewer, so not having a foot control is really messing with my brain. This machine, of course, comes with a foot control. You know what? I even have the foot control pl plugged in. Why am I not using the foot control? What a goof. Okay. All right. It's right down there. I put it down there. Okay. So this is my seam allowance here. My, my hem allowance, or half of my hem allowance. And... 
I don't want that gathered up. So I'm going to turn it up on that and flip it once again. So see how that goes? But look at how there's extra fabric out here. I am going to sew one more time, but I'm going to make my stitch one tick longer. Move my foot control so I can actually use it. And then I'm going to stitch now an eighth of an inch in here. And I made a longer stitch length. So that way we can pull it in and gather it if we need to. Okay, so there we go. So I'm just going to... I turned the speed way down. Look at that. I'm a much more confident sewer when I use my foot. <laughs> okay, so what, what I'm doing here is I'm putting in a little stitch line that we can gather. The first stitch line is a fold guide, and the second one is for um, gathering and getting rid of that extra length that we have there. Okay, I'm almost done. Okay, now I'm not going to, I don't want to use the cutter on this one because I want to use it for gathering. So I'm going to just pull that and then find your bobbin thread. For me, it's really easy because the white is the bobbin on this one. And I'm just going to slightly, ever so slightly pull that and ease that fabric in. Now, you can also, what did I do with my pins? You can also just start pre-pinning it. Look how it already kind of wants to pull up. These are silk pins. I would suggest these or an applique pin if you can get the package open. My goodness, I had it open a minute ago. What on earth? I opened them a second ago. Oh, there we go. Okay. And I like these because they're so short. See how short those are? You use longer pins, they get difficult to handle. Okay, so our bottom line is our is our fold line. So I'm going to put it right there on that stitch line, then flip it up. And that is my quarter inch. So now the total that I've used is a half inch. So then just work your way around every so often putting a pin in. And then we can go back to the in-between parts. Okay. And this works on garments too. If you're sewing anything, a ruffle or anything that has a, or a hem that has a curved edge, it works for real people size stuff too, not just Barbie size stuff. But look at how, how easy that is. Have you ever tried to hem a curved hem and get it pressed into place? Well, just by adding that little bit of a gather or a little bit of a, a stitch on the edge just kind of sucks it up. And look at how nice and smooth that is. So it's really, really easy to get a beautiful curved hem. Now I know I mentioned it right at first, but the way to work with Barbie clothes is to take your time and relax. Okay, so here is this hem all finished. And I don't know if you can see, I use matching thread, but I used a decorative stitch. It's little cross stitches to do the hem. So that's a lot prettier than it is just to do a straight stitch. So why not have fun with your decorative stitches? Okay, so now um, I want to show you a couple of other things on decorating your Barbie clothes. She, I so should have put a ribbon in her hair. Um, but anyhow, um, so when you're working with with your Barbie, um, a lot of times they will use um, Velcro. So her back, her dress, ooh, don't, sorry, her panties showed. Um, <laughs> but she's got Velcro, and then that just holds everything closed. Now, how on earth do you get colored Velcro? Let me show you. With markers, permanent markers like Sharpies, actually are alcohol based and they do a great job of col coloring that Velcro. This side doesn't really show because it's down, but this side, depending on how much, you know, cake Barbie had at the birthday party, she might not be able to get it all the way, you know, on. So this way, if it shows a little bit, it doesn't matter, right? And then there is a snap at her neck that you hand sew on. And if I wanted to, I could use that same pink marker and color my thread had I, had I cared, right? 
Okay, so that's those things. Now let's talk about those snaps for a second. Get yourself a couple of packages of snaps. Why? Because they're small and when you drop them, you lose them. Hmm. Um, yeah, so I was on the hunt for a long time because I don't like to uh, lose anything. But another thing that you might enjoy doing, because these things are so hard to hold in place and have them stay where you want to sew them. Any of you have joy sewing snaps on? No. If you take the snap and on the back side, so this is the back side that's showing right here. If you take the Coulter Select glue stick and you apply it to the to the outside, this might show a little bit better, apply it on there, then you can stick it right where you want it to go, and then you let it set, and then it's glued in place. And I mean, not glued permanent, and don't sneeze too hard on it, but it will be held in place enough for you to be able to hand stitch the little, the little snaps on, okay? So that will help you with that as well. Okay, and then of course, in your, in your Barbie sewing arsenal, you need hand sewing needles because you will be hand stitching stuff. Um, okay, let me see, anything else in here that I have for you for a tip? All right, let's get to trimmings. This is the fun part, okay? Put all this back in here. This is kind of like my bag of Barbie stuff, okay? So my bag of Barbie joy. Um, I found that when I went to the store, there's tons of trims, there's tons of things, and my goodness, you can't afford to buy them all right? So I found a couple of things. I did find a multicolored packet of little rosettes. And so I can use those to decorate, you know, on her waistband or on the top of a hat. Just really, really cute there. Um, and then of course, grab yourself some really the, the eight inch wide elastic. You'll need that for some of the garments. Um, the little pins also out of my um, stuff in my my craft supplies i pulled out some of these bigger beads because you can use these for buttons and they look they're the right size for her which is perfect because i did buy some where are you buttons here and these were the smallest ones i could find at the store but they're they're quarter inch buttons they're really i mean they're clownishly large right for a barbie clothes and i did find on online on eBay, I found these. Now these are an eighth of an inch button and that's a good size for Barbie. So I'm really happy about that. But the challenge is with this stuff and some other things is the color. Are you gonna wanna buy every color of button? No. Do you want to, um, you know, you don't want to buy them all. So let's see what we can do. I have not tried this one, but I think it's going to work. Let's, I'm going to glue it down so he will stay there. Let him set for a second. But what I'm going to do is grab a Sharpie and I'm going to color him. Now you might have some of your craft markers other than Sharpie. So you might have more colors at home, um, but let's see what happens. So if we take this and we color our button. Oh, lo and behold, look at that. I've got a purple button. That's awesome. Let that set and dry. And now we'll have a purple button. So we went from ivory to purple. That's like a perfect thing. So now let's look at other trimmings that we can have. Kim Marie says that she gets clear buttons if she can find them. Oh, that's so smart. I love that. Yes, clear would be great. I've got some sequins in my little, in my little uh, Barbie stuff. And then um, I've got my Velcro, and I told you that I the plush side of the Velcro, I did color with the, the Sharpie, right? Because it's um, not the rough part, right? Anyhow, um, okay, so then I found this really pretty trim at the store, and I thought that with the scale was really good, but the color wasn't great. So I took one of my markers, and I made it the kind of the rust color and i thought that would be a perfect accompaniment to this little barbie dress isn't that going to be cute and then um let's look at this where'd he go here this trim this is on a spool and apparently i've unspooled Ooh, i unspooled the whole thing okay so this 
is really pretty, but it's wider than I want for Barbie. And it's also may not be the right color. It might be the right color, but it may not be. So I took a turquoise pen and I colored that and I colored the stones too. Isn't that pretty? And this is a um, non-woven um, ribbon base that it's on. So look at this. You can even come through here and cut a thin little strand so you could have just a perfect little waistband or a trimmer trimming for a hat or something like that. So you can create the trims that you want. I even bought some of this uh, very, it's an eighth inch wide uh, ribbon that has the opalescent ends to it. And I thought that would be really pretty. So you can do lots of things with, you know, markers and um, the little trim. So you don't have to get stuck on trying to find the right color trim lace or whatever it is. So you can have yourself a nice little kit of Barbie supplies without breaking the bank. So that's really fun. Okay. Are there any questions? Okay. You guys ready for a fashion show? Okay. I've during COVID, I did bring this out and I showed everybody, but I thought, what an, what a great time to show you again. And I pulled it out this time and it broke. This is my, this is my Barbie box bag that I had since I was little. In fact, this little train case, I think I got this at a garage sale when I was little. So it's really pretty old and well loved. But the wonderful thing is that the clothes that are inside, most of them were made by a great aunt of mine. And I think I only met her once or twice, but every few months in the mail, she would send me these beautiful outfits. So this is a nightgown. We'll come to that. But I mean, look, look at this. It's, this is velvet and it has those little paper flowers. You remember those as a kid? We used to have those would be on everything. I think they still make them, but she's got little tiny um, gold rickrack on here and it's a little halter, halter dress. Isn't that pretty? And then here is her jacket that goes with it. It is, has rabbit fur and satin lining. And she just did such a beautiful job on making these clothes. So that's one outfit. Oh, this is the um, robe that goes with this nightgown. So there you go. You've got a robe and a nightgown. Isn't that fun? I really liked Barbies when we were little because you got the Barbie in the swimsuit and you bought clothes or you got clothes or you made clothes for her. Now they're themed. I don't find that as much fun as, um, as you know, Barbie in the swimsuit, you know? And here I have a flannel nightgown. Looks like I need to do some laundry. And I love this little dress. Isn't that fun? But so much fun. Oh, look at this. My wool, wool coat. She was the height of fashion. And this little dress. And then this one. Isn't that great? Now, here's, here's an example. She used um, pinking shears to keep it from raveling so they didn't get really hairy. And here's a difference. Um, this one, if you can see here, the pinking shears were not used. So see how hairy it is compared to that. So if you had gone around, if when you make yours, if you go around and trim that with pinking shears, it will be less fuzzy. Oh, and I also got some Hawaiian kind of outfits. This one's a pretty little dress and a little tennis outfit. This one, I've lost one piece of this. So here's the pantsuit. So 70s, right? And then it had a halt, a matching halter top, and I don't know where that is. This one, I'm thinking, I don't know if she made this one or if this one was purchased. I don't remember. But then here's this lovely little, little suit. And this one had a pair of pants. Don't know where those went. And, oh, isn't this beautiful? Look at how regal. It's brocade. And if you ever want to know what you do with gold rickrack, that's what you do with gold rickrack. And this one had a halter top. There's the flare pant and the straight leg pant because, you know, you had to have the bell bottoms. And this one was lovely. It had a little bouquet of the flowers on the side. But just a really lovely little dress. One of my favorites... So this was the bridesmaid and this was the, the wedding gown. Isn't that fun? 
And let's see what else is in here. Everything else in here is something that was purchased um, at the store. That you can make felt hats to go with some of your outfits. Oh, yeah. Did you see on that pattern, that one pattern that I first showed you, that had a hat pattern in it too. So I'm really kind of excited to do that. And then I'll show you this because this really, she made this for me too. It's out of a um, dish a liquid bottle. And then you crochet on the top and then you flip it up and it becomes a baby bassinet. And I still have the little baby that goes in the little bassinet. Oh, sorry. Little baby. So isn't that fun? So just some good memories. So, you know, I know Barbie is all the rage right now. So maybe you have uh, a collection that you would like to make some clothes for, or maybe you have someone special in your life that you would like to create memories for. Again, I never really, but maybe one time when I was really little met this aunt, but I still think fondly of the clothes that she made for me. And it's and it just such a special thing. So that's something that we could give on to others and um, pass on the joy. And you can get your kids invited to a lot of birthday parties, right? So um, with that, if there's no other questions, it was fun being with you today. And I hope you have fun making something creative at home.